sometimes I'm working and I'm like, damn, that piece right there, it's so good. And I'll just make a taco real quick and I put the, everything on it, the salsa, and I'm just like, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm home. Like this is Mex this is it. My name is Miguel Escobedo. I'm AKA DJ Mr. E. I own Al Pastor Papi. Start with a taco al pastor. Just get one. Go on the corner, knock yourself out, and then get back in line. So you can get the tacos, vampiros, which is the same taco, but we melted some cheese on that bad boy. Burritos. I'll do a torta. I, you know, I love tortas. And that's it. That's it. You know, that's a lot. It's actually a lot to have on a truck. Anna, pam, pam, pam. Anna? All right, girl, you're all set. Thank you. Al Pastor is a food that was brought from Lebanon to Mexico, and we turned it into pork because that's what we do. Since I was little, I ate tacos al pastor growing up in Mexico City, and it's just my favorite food. It's delicious, but it's also a show. You know, there's a show to it. I always think of it now, like almost like Mexican Benihana, you know, because there's a guy and he's working the knife and you're you're entertained and nothing can compare to it. So that's what Al Pastor Papi is, is me trying to bring Mexico City to San Francisco. So the trompo, we, we do the pineapple as the base for us, mainly to add height. We're trying to make a trompo, which is, a top, and so you want to achieve that exact shape when you make the trompo. And so you have to be picky about the size, what's next, you know? And the layering starts with the cutting. In the Bay Area, it's almost never trompo. What makes Al Pastor Papi's Al Pastor different than any Al Pastor in San Francisco is that it's real Al Pastor, you know? And it's a real trompo that's being marinated for a couple of days, built and made that day for you. The beauty of it is that it's the recipe that I got from Mexico City. It's super dope. It's the sexiest food, man. It's to see the color and then the, once we start firing it up, it's just an amazing food. It's got so much history and tradition beyond our borders, you know? So I was born and raised in Mexico City. My dad, just a great cook. He's the master of the salsas. And I don't mean dancing. My dad was involved with uh, my uncle's restaurant before we came here, and the restaurant Celia's. And the first job was bussing tables at Celia's. I fell in love with San Francisco. The first time I saw it, the first time I was here. So when I was 14 years old, I told myself, I wanna live in San Francisco, have a restaurant in San Francisco, and DJ in San Francisco. That is my goals in life. And when I was 25, I started DJing in San Francisco. When I was 26, I owned a restaurant in San Francisco. And when I was 27, I lived in San Francisco. You gotta watch what you put out in the universe because it might happen, you know. The opportunity arose with my brother uh, having seen a spot. What came out was papalote, which was Mexican food. But then I kind of, 20 years later, I was like, I should just, you know, coast and autopilot. I'm good, but I'm missing something. And at that point, my brother kind of wanted to take the whole thing this way, and I wanted to kind of do it more this way. We parted ways, ending my 20-year run at Papalote and starting something from scratch was the stupidest thing I've ever done, and then the best thing that I, I had to do. Now, my inspiration and my motivation is Al Pastor Papi. So everything in the menu evolved around this. Mm. 
If I'm silent, it's because I'm overwhelmed with how we're doing great. So we're gonna do the um, the main event of our menu, which is the tacos al pastor. The the way that you should try to cut the trompo in parallel to the meat and one straight line down. Onion, cilantro, and then all the al pastor has the piña. So that's it, man. That's that's the basis of it. This is what it all revolves around. I owe it to myself to really learn as much as I can, just personally, about my favorite food. I looked for al pastor cursos, the Instituto Gastronomico de Mexico, and they had a one-day intensive on al pastor. And I was giddy, man. The thing that was amazing about it is not only did I learn how, but the thing that I love that I learned is why. And I never asked that question. I was just looking for how. And why is because it's a preservative. Heavy on the vinegar, heavy on the salt. Here's some of the marinade now. And um, we're gonna make another batch. It's just a very little salt, okay? Very little, look. <laughs> That's it, very little. These two have probably been marinating since this one the most, like three days. This one probably two days. It reassured me of, of where I'm going and who I was. This is it. This is the real deal and I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm gonna give you Mexico City at Pastor. I booked another flight to Mexico City. To me, the street game is almost more important than the school game. And so I got both. I went back there. I met the guys at Los Amiguitos Taqueria. They were happy to take me in and teach me what they do. So I, I shadowed them for a couple of days and I saw the guy build the trompo. And so I learned street game and I saw the guys and I saw why they cut it the way they cut it. And then I started Al Pastor Papi. Yeah. So on a typical day, man, of Al Pastor Papi, I get up around six. So today's Saturday. Right now, thank God I have this thing. It's a definite advantage to be able to move around to, and go to the people and create opportunities, buy most of the things that we're gonna need for the day. Then I go to the yard, pick up the truck, load in. I just want it to be um, almost burnt a little bit on the tips. That way that when I cut it, it's gonna cut a lot easier than if it's like cold raw, you know? So everything's good to go. We just prepped a little, all for today, a little bit for tomorrow. We're about to ride out to Speakeasy, which is luckily like three minutes away. Just have a good time today. Should be a good gig. And I'm still nervous. I won't, I won't, um, get my hopes up until I see the sound system. If the guys with the sound come and everything works out, I'm DJing. If not, DJ Bluetooth. All right, so I'm making the torta. The torta, we've pretty much assembled the kind of like the shavings and scraps off the trompo. And we have them chilling over here. And then we get the cheese. The texture I want to go for on the bread is in and out burnt. And the bread is soft, but fine, fine, firmly grilled on the inside, like almost a crunch. And so on the, on the bottom part, that's what I want to get. So we let that chill for a while. Cheese is melted, the bottom's crispy. So we go ahead and throw that in there. And you can see that crispy kind of sh shield right there that you're going to get to bite into. It's got the pineapple that's seared. You throw some whole beans because we can. And then the Mexico City part, which is the onion cilantro. And that gives it like the taco feel. We use our salsa verde. And that's gonna give it just enough kick without making it spicy or taking away from that pastor. Crema, because that's just a must have in a torta. You gotta have your crema. And then we got some jalapenos. And we just put a little bit of that too. 
Those are the must-have components of a torta. The cream, I think, and the aguacate. It's gotta be there. Boom. We're gonna wrap it up right here. I'm gonna tie it up nicely. Almost as tight as a burrito, but not quite, because you don't wanna, you wouldn't wanna mess it up. And that's it. You can eat it. You can rub it all over your body. Whatever you wanna do to it. That's how it goes. Hey, Kevin, my cousin. What's up, primo? My bad. What are you landing airplanes today? Yeah, man. You know, nice. <laughs> you should have. That shit would have been. That would have been exciting. <laughs> People stop me on the street sometimes and like, dude, you've been doing it for the community forever, and we follow you, we support you, you inspire us. Dude, you beat Bobby Flay in the mission with burritos, like, dog. Aaron Sanchez took a bite of a burrito I created, and he's like, you are the Mexican Messiah. You have set the mission free. I was like, God damn, you know? But I, I, as proud as I am of beating Bobby Flay and getting these awards, I'm proud that I was able to provide 700 meals in May to feed people in need because of COVID in the mission. And we got involved with the World Central Kitchen. There was a big fires this whole summer. And a lot of the farm workers, what they do is they'll farm all the way up till November and then they'll save that money until the next season, which is in February. But this year, what didn't burn down got ruined. So they lost all their income, you know? And a lot of these folks are undocumented, so they don't get any federal help or anything. So there's all these organizations trying to help out. It's a great feeling, you know, because when you're in a bad situation and you don't know where your next meal's coming from, to see the big pink truck come up and shell out some tacos al pastor or burritos and horchata for free for you and your whole family, it's nice to put a smile on people's face, you know? There's people downstairs bringing me boxes of toilet paper that we called for so I can go tomorrow and drop them off. Basic needs, you know, that we take for granted. They don't have the resources right now. I feel as a restaurant owner and as a member of my community, it's, it's my job, it's all of our jobs to give back to the community. That's what I love about the truck, that I'm literally in the community. I'm driving through neighborhoods I never even went in ever. And now I work in Hunters Point. I'm constantly in the mission. I'm in North Beach. The truck's there. The truck's where I can be, you know? And so being in grounded in the, in the community, I can feel the community, you know? We're rolling down the street and we're feeding people and we're having a good time doing it. I think when I opened, the first time I opened, just the fact that I did it, I felt like I made it. That I made it from a thought to a drawing, to a concept, to a, the truck's almost ready, to the trompo's almost ready, to my first trompo. We survived the worst part of COVID. We're still kicking ass, so we're making it, you know, and that's, I made it, you know. <laughs>